That's perfect, actually, to keep it contained. Because he thinks he can go through it. Yeah, he totally thinks he can. What is going on here? Oh my gosh. Is that the exercise? Is that what you think? I should actually try that. Like, you have to put a pair under the table and then you just keep walking. Hi, Emily. Do you have a picture or something? Like, it's something that he can shoot people like that. All I do is like show me a picture of like a mountains or something like a nature. Yeah, it's like, oh, hey, Emily, can you say something quick so I'm sure that we can hear you on our side? Yep. Oh, awesome. Perfect. This is so much better than the TV, how we set up before. Yeah, when multiple people are talking, it's harder to hear the single person, but I can still hear you pretty well. Perfect. Yeah, like if I'm right here presenting, that should work for you. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. This is enough. Let's do it. Okay. So, um, the first portfolio workshop here is going to be all about project documentation how to properly set up all the pieces of your portfolio before we start doing the layout. And I'm going to start off with an example of a physical model that I terribly documented my freshman year of college. And I went back and I properly documented it and got it ready to go into my portfolio. And um, that's what I think um, if, you, if you're going to be on track for kind of keeping up with us in the next few weeks here is try to get this done by the next portfolio workshop or at least enough per page to start thinking about layout which is the topic of our second workshop series so you can go to the next slide abby um like i said it all starts with proper documentation and formatting taking your time to make those projects that you spent so long looking awesome to look good when you you know happen digitally so you can go to the next one this is that example of that project that I did freshman year where I set it on a um, dorm chair and took a picture with my iPhone 5. And um, I spent a lot of time on that, uh, on that, um, I think, Sadie. I spent a lot of time on that project and it, uh, it doesn't look too great when you document it like this. So some of the things to be thinking about when you do document physical models is lighting which is probably the most important which we have some more slides about the background the background in this photo is that dorm chair and then the walls of pavic hall not entirely perfect for a portfolio uh the quality resolution again i shot it with an iphone 5 wasn't the greatest it could be and patience obviously the patience it takes to properly set it up to go to the photo doc room if you're checking out a camera the patience to actually get that done, not just snap with your phone. Um, so first thing that we wanna do is set up our scene. And I set up a little four second time lapse of me doing that, if you click on that. Um, if you click on the photo, sorry. So um, I went to the photo doc room in Renaissance Hall and I took my time uh, choosing what I, my background would be. So I, I wanted the black background because I thought it contrasted better with that, uh, with my gray model. And I took my time to set up lights. I decided that I wanted a second one to have brighter and longer shadows. So that's just kind of showing the process of taking your time and setting up the scene. Um, and then that photo is just kind of what it came out uh, raw from my, from my uh, iPhone 11. So that would be an example of a phone that probably takes good enough pictures if you have access to that. You can go down another slide. Um, these are a few not to use, especially with lighting. There's overexposure, underexposure, and then what you would ought to be just right, which is long shadows of dark faces and light surfaces where the light is hitting. This should really all be a review for us, but it's something that I didn't think of until I started actually preparing.
preparing for this um, for this workshop, and I looked back at all my projects and I said, "Wow, even though I knew that, I did a pretty lazy job of actually getting it right." So, um, again, just an example of taking your time and how much better it can make your projects look. So, saving and formatting is something also that we we all learn like our first and second years here. And again, something that we don't always do correctly. So um, in my case, I use my iPhone 11. It typically shoots in HEIC, which is an unreadable format in Windows. And um, I use a third party app um, to change it to a PNG or JPEG, which is you know, ideal for our PDF portfolio. And if you're using a DSLR camera, such as one you own or a friend owns or something you lent from the university, um, you wanna make sure if, if you're shooting in RAW, you know how to open that in either Photoshop or some other program, um, or just don't shoot in RAW and shoot in JPEG. And then you'll want to organize your projects in a folder, flash drive or cloud, have a file structure that shows, you know, these are all my physical models and have those, um, you know, organized so they're not all on your desktop or elsewhere. I'm gonna be going through and reorganizing all mine. Um, it doesn't take as long as you think. And another way to change um, formats, obviously, is Photoshop and Lightroom, which we all have access to with the Adobe Suite. And you can just use the save as um, to save it to either JPEG or TIFF or PNG. This, and then we're starting to talk about post production. So, oh, <laughs> we get the tortoise. <laughs> the tortoise took over the presentation. So, um, post production is probably the most important um, part of getting your photos ready for documentation and um, your portfolio. So, I wanted um this specific project to have like a lot of dark colors so i turned down the contrast play with the vibrance um i did it in i added a portrait um filter to it and then i started to play with effects such as the watercolor effect in photoshop and that kind of leads us into the next point is when you're documenting your physical models and as abby will talk about later your digital models and renderings be thinking about a theme what the, what the general theme of your portfolio is going to be. So on the left is an example of one they, you can see all the doc, all the pictures they have are whether, you know, it's a drawing or a picture with a, with a camera, they're going for a black and white, theme, right? And they're not necessarily thinking about colors yet, but be thinking about what's the general, um, you know, hue range or uh, general darkness to lightness of your photos and your renderings when you're getting them ready. Um, a few other project examples you can see here. Um, obviously, they knew what they were doing before they even started rendering this. They are using a lot of whites versus reds for shadow versus light. And um, this one here, they're, they're even playing with the opacity. See the opacity of the renderings and the photos makes the text stand out a lot more. And they use white space a lot. So something to be thinking about when we're getting our physical models and our uh, digital renderings ready to go into the portfolio. Yeah, I think this middle top one is really nice to show variety because I think that we all have a lot of that. We have a lot of hand drawing stuff. We have um, some really, um, I don't know, <laughs> a not as awesome SketchUp renderings and then some awesome Lumion renderings and some awesome Photoshop renderings and so just to like establish the level of difference and like why that project would be put in your portfolio too. Like maybe it's not the best rendered, but it shows your process and it shows that this is where you were in your second year, but now you showed like your improvement of where you are in your third, fourth, and fifth year. Yeah, and with, with any like colorful rendering too, you're going to have black and white concept sketches that are going to go along with that and be thinking like, how am I going to get those into my portfolio to show my process and how is that going to work with the colorful renderings? So, um, and that, that often that involves another term of like physical 
documentation, which is using the scanners rather than taking a picture of it on the table. Um, then this is also another review, which is image file formats. Um, we'll be, uh, we have a resources folder that will be uploaded later today if it hasn't been. And um, it'll have a lot of like helpful videos on helpful videos mostly and graphics like this, um, whether it's something new or review. But yeah, this is just a review of most ideal image formats for any of your documentation. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but this kind of like makes my brain a little bit happier when it comes to this stuff is I'm like, I can't remember which program likes raster image, which program likes vector images. It's just kind of something I don't want to have to remember because I want to remember the stuff that I need to know, which is landscape architecture, you know? Um, and so it's just kind of like this is really makes me a lot calmer in deciding like, okay, what should I export out of what? And even so, like how you're even setting up your documents in the CMYK or RGB, that's a pretty big one too. This is another review, something to be thinking about, which is size. And we all know what happens if you save something too small and try to um, sample it. Um, which I'll show on the next slide. But this is to be thinking, what size is my portfolio going to be? Is it going to be an 11 by 17 spread? Is it going to be portrait? Is it going to be landscape, et cetera? Have a, have a plan of what size physical portfolio that's going to be and make sure the images you're saving are going to be able to go on that, on that page. And this is the example I made of upsampling. This is the original photo on the bottom left that we took off of Google. And when we were setting up this documentation, we wanted to use this like paper size graphic and we upsampled it again to fit the page nicely. And we were like, oh wait, that's a perfect example of what not to do. So um, yeah, just a review again for most of us in doubt, always save bigger. Um, don't try to downsample stuff um, when you're uh, editing your uh, photos in Photoshop. So that that covers my end of physical formatting, the physical documentation, and then Abby's going to go into a little bit of the um, digital side. Okay, let's take a break. Yeah. So any like questions first off on like the first little bit? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Does anybody even have all their projects from like first and second year and whatnot? Somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, okay, so like right? 50 50. Yeah. <laughs> I have a side comment. What's that? Um, I can't really see who's all here, but if anyone has questions of like what they should include in said portfolio, um, me and some of like the upperclassmen, I'm based off of my classmates stuff, like. I can tell you what I've gotten feedback from in interviews and stuff. Um, if anyone has questions on stuff like that, mm -hmm. like you don't have to include work you don't like, like that no one ever said you have to like include a second year project that you hate to show like how much better you've gotten, like <laughs> things like that. Like you don't have to do that. So I do have a list of that I can put in the discord when I find it, but I wrote down a bunch of notes once of like, what do I actually put in this? Friggin' portfolio that everyone says I need to make. So. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for making that point. I wanted to. Yeah, that that project that I went back and documented. I did that because I liked the project. I didn't like how it was documented, but I wanted to include that in my portfolio. So. Yeah, yeah and I think point. today is more about like setting it up because mm -hmm. your portfolio and just thinking about what's going to go in it is another beast in itself. And right now, it's just like okay, let me get all my files and collect everything that might go in there. That doesn't mean it's going to make the cut. You know, that doesn't mean I'm going to fill up 10 to 15 pages. It might mean only like five to seven and that's okay too. But that's not what today's about. And that's not what today's milestone is about. It's just about collecting the projects, doing the right thing, saving them right, taking the pictures correctly. Um, and then once we get this part done, then, then we can move on. Then we can decide, okay, what should go in here? What order? Why? And like how much of AutoCAD versus Lumion rendering should I have? You know, that's 
that's for next week. <laughs> yeah, and if, if you're a second year um, that's watching this, either through a recording or online, um, you guys might think that you have less to show because of like, you've done mostly physical models, but if you're applying for an internship, they're going to be looking at your portfolio knowing full well that you are a second year student. Therefore, they're going to judge your quality of work based on what you're expected to know. They're not going to look in there and be like, where's all the Lumion renderings? Because they know where you're at. And if you make your level of work shine out above the level of work of other similar level you know, applicants, that's gonna make you stand out. And on top of that, you're already going to know what to do next time that you're doing a, uh, say your first Lumion rendering. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't want um, any second year that's doing this to think that it's like practice because it's not. It can be applicable to have a really good portfolio at your level of education. Question. So most of our stuff from second year is like drawn on vellum or whatever. So documenting that, you would use like a large format scanner yep. like we have in the basement. I'm just wondering if anyone's used it recently. Because um, the last time I used it, it put streaks across your um, page in the PDF. Like it doesn't actually physically put it on your your um, project, but like in the PDF that it saves, it, it puts streaks across it that you can't remove. So the, that, that's because it's when it's stained, if there's some dirt so or something. There's some so scratches in the glass. Yeah, it needs to be clean. Yeah, and I didn't know about that. So now yeah. that I know, I can go down and fix that. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I think that the glass is scratched. Like the we have to scratched. replace the glass. It's not dirty. Because I've cleaned it. it. Must have happened this semester. There's also one in there's one in Renaissance too that oh, people okay. can use. But uh, now that we know about that, we can. Yeah, because this is the goal to have our stuff like scanned and documented by the next. That that's that's a goal. That's like a soft yeah deadline to keep us all on track. Um, yeah. All the stuff that you potentially want to put in your portfolio, the ideas have it properly documented. And in an ideal world from now on, like you want to document your things as you do them. So you don't have to go back and do everything in like this big portfolio workshop kind of deal. But I definitely haven't done all mine correctly. As you've seen, I'm gonna go back and do mine just you know, with everybody and yeah. All right. Um... So for the next portion, then what specifically? Um, oh, there's a chat. Update uh, your portfolio once you have one. Making your portfolio is step one. Yes, you're right, Emily. Um, I guess for the rest of this session, we were more so thinking there was going to be a workshop. But today I set up a little bit of like, and maybe I'm getting too far into next session, but I'll just show you guys what I have set up so far for my portfolio, and that's an InDesign. Um, so I'll tell you just the steps of what I've done so far, and it's kind of off topic of um, how we, how we, um, we're talking about today is like what, how you need to like collect your information and what you're going to do with it. But I think this is another thing that kind of plays off the theme of importance of how you're gonna go back and um, edit your photos or have like pick and choose which renderings you want. Um, so what I just did is I created an InDesign document. Um, oh, so I just created this graphic. I wanted to keep it really simple and I wanted to just give like a little snippet of what I wanted to put underneath. Um, just kind of like the bread and butter of the first page of the book, really. Like who wrote it? What are they doing? What's it about? Um, and then I just really only have four pages so far because I really truly don't know what I want to include. I've got a lot of junk. I got a lot of projects that I need to go back and take more pictures of, but in my brain, I'm kind of making a list of the things that I need to document. Because I know I've taken a foundations class, I've taken a film photography class, I've 
taken ceramics, I've done drawing, I've done all of, I've done planning, I've done grading, but do I have them documented? No. Are they somewhere at my parents' house in the basement? Yes. So should I take them out and document them? Probably. But now I know like, okay, I started this, this is my list. This is um, how I wanna get going. These are the things that I really wanna make sure I include because I think they're unique. Um, and this is like by no means how you have to do this, but in my brain, I was like, okay, I have to have something a little bit more like concrete so I can follow it. I just don't wanna start adding a bunch of projects from second year and a bunch of paintings that I've done. And then all of a sudden I forget that I did sculpture or ceramics, which is also like pretty important. Um, so really this is just kind of all of I, all I've started is the title page, just a spread. Um, nothing really um complicated just a list and it doesn't have to be in design it could also be an illustrator it could be in your notebook it could be whatever you want but i think this is also like a pretty good place to get started if you are also confused like i once was about where to even start just go through your college years and be like okay i took this studio my first year and then this studio my second year and this one my next and maybe a chronological order is best for you to collect your data in and collect all of your projects and have them find a home, really. Yes. So, so you want to touch, maybe other people have something to add into this too. Is it just schoolwork that you think you can add into this? Or do you think there's some things that we do on a personal level that we're really proud of that you would think we can include? Um, so, so like things on the side. I feel like it depends what it is. If it's like, like, like in your case, a painting. If you did a painting that wasn't a school requirement, yeah, would you include that? So, okay, to me, this is a design portfolio. Painting makes me a designer. You know, does rock climbing make me a designer? No, <laughs> not gonna put that in my portfolio. You know, like what kind of a portfolio do you want to build? Your landscape architecture student build the landscape architecture portfolio. You know, if yeah, go ahead. So, so you build your portfolio based off of what you're applying for. So I mean, if the thing that you did outside of school has to do with what you're applying for, maybe it is beneficial. I don't know what that thing is, but yeah, it's possible. I would say, but it's also possible it's not important to include. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that that's something to look forward to next uh, on Monday. Our judges will be giving their they're what we call expectation statements. So now hopefully at the point by Monday, we'll be able to look back on all the work that we properly documented or have properly documented in the past. And we'll be able to say, okay, which one of these do I want to put in a portfolio that will please these people that I should be tailoring towards? As that's something to keep in mind too, is even though this is um, something we're doing to prepare ourselves for the jobs that we all want to get this summer, um, it's also a competition and um, all these judges are people who work at landscape architecture firms. Uh, Joan is an incredibly successful landscape architect and she hires people every year. So they're, they're people that I think that to be taken seriously when you're applying for an internship. So, yeah. Yeah, I would even say like, I mean, for me, I feel like maybe not a lot of people paint and maybe not a lot of people do ceramics and that's fine, but that's really important to me. And that's also the kind of job that I'm gonna be applying for. Or like maybe the job or internship that you're gonna be applying for is way different. And maybe you shouldn't include painting or ceramics. I don't know. Um, everybody's is gonna be different and it's gonna be tailored to like your lifestyle, your the goal of the job you want and also the job itself you know like if i'm going to apply to snow Hedda, yeah i'm going to put painting and all that stuff in there they're going to love that <laughs> um yeah but i mean if it's maybe more so an engineering firm i don't know are they going to really like that is that going to be useful i i i don't know you're going to want to see like construction drawings and stuff yeah. right right so it might be more um technical but these are just the things to think about right now don't get too ahead of yourself don't get too overwhelmed we're taking this week by week and piece by piece and we're doing this so people don't get overwhelmed so we set you guys up for success um i think that's kind of my piece right now um 
Uh, I had a question because I'm I'm trying to like follow along to you. Like I'm I'm a third year. I don't know that much. I I have a website. I don't have a port like portfolio. I've tried building one a lot of times, but do you think a good spot for some of us to start like today and this week would be in, in addition to getting everything um, documented would be setting up kind of a, a page layout decide you know what what the size is going to be and maybe some of the uh, the styling that the, those photos mm -hmm. are going to be sure uh -huh. on the website or on a on not a not a website not a website sure. this is all about a hardcover portfolio sure okay um yeah so you and I had talked about what would be ideal if you want to do 11 by 17 or eight and a half by 11 if you want to do a landscape or if you want to do it um portrait or even square if some people do square one or even square too you know that's something to think about sure um from like a upper classman standpoint i have heard just do eight and a half by 11 and do it landscape or portrait um, because nine times out of 10, what you're going to do is you're going to email your PDF and they're going to print it at the office. And so unless you want like a really cool square one that you're printing yourself, uh, they're, they're not going to cut it. They're just, they're just going to have a rectangle. So think about it in that term. I've, I've been told like even doing 11 by 17 spreads can work, but like it can be inconvenient for the office that's printing it off. So, I mean, though, don't overthink it too much, but this is the easiest way. Thanks, Emily. Yeah. What, what about like, I feel like that table of contents, when you go through and redocument some of that, it's going to help you decide, maybe cut some things out you know you don't need to include. Yeah. You don't want to waste our time documenting like a, a crappy project, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. Like there's, there's some things that I've done that I know I will never include. There's some things I know I might include, right? So from, maybe some of all of our perspectives or even yours, Emily, um, what process do you go through to kind of decide what to include and what not to and where to put your time into properly documenting and formatting it? So the way I kind of look at this is a little bit like a visual resume. And like, if you did something cool and you got an award for it, like you made a video and you got an award or you made an art piece and it got in a gallery. Um, I would totally include those things. And so that's going out of like, not necessarily school related. So the rest of it, yeah, focus on your classes, like Abby said, 100%, go through, remember all the classes you took, but also if you've done things, particularly things that were competition based, I would also make sure you take pictures of those too. I mean, I feel like every project should be documented, whether you use it or not. Because imagine yourself in like 20 years when you buy a house and you're still keeping these really crappy projects that you never even put in your portfolio, you know? I mean, at least you have a picture of it and you don't have to put it in your house as a dust collector. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I totally heard that. Document it and then throw it away. Like if you don't <laughs> but at least you have a picture. Right, right. So, I mean, and maybe that if you don't keep that project and you threw it away, then it probably doesn't belong in your portfolio. As, and there's your answer. As someone who's moved it three times in the past year, I'm really tired of hauling around like a trunk full of old projects. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's when I decided to just document it and throw it all away. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with throwing away your old projects. Like, it's okay. And sometimes <laughs> if you don't document pro pro properly and then you throw it away, then it's kind of, it's kind of the end of that, you know. You either have to make, make a new one or do some really tricky Photoshop to make those, those pictures look different, which is possible. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, I don't know. It's, it's also just like what you prefer. And people are going to tell you they like different things. Oh, maybe I wish you would have put that tracking project in there for, for this reason or for that reason. And, you know, that's just kind of where you have to be. 
you have to make decisions intentionally and you have to be able to respond to that kind of commentary in like a respectful, intentional way. Well, yes, I agree with that, but this is why I didn't include it is because of X, Y, and Z. And for those that have had internships, um, you also can include internship work in your portfolio. Uh, the internships I've had, they've just told me like anything you've worked on, just like include our name, you can use this in your portfolio, but I would check with them first because uh, they may have different policies, but that's another thing that you can include as well. Yeah. For, the, for the rest of the night, for as long as like everybody wants to hang around, I thought, we thought, um, all of us, that would be best kind of to see what everybody has, because there's some projects that I kind of want people's opinions on. Do you think I should include this? I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Maybe we have other questions, you know, can I salvage this photo I took as a freshman of this model I really like? So uh, yeah. maybe, Abby, you want to see if uh, Brian on there has any questions and we can kind sure. of go to our desks and work for a while or if that's uh, something we want to do. So I'm going to be here working. Or maybe today is just like making your folder for your portfolio stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just that. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. the biggest thing is um, if you decide to, you know, take the initiative and do this, this competition for the next few weeks, um, I want us to leave here knowing exactly what we're going to do for the next few days and over the weekend. So we're ready for the next one. So, um, yeah, that, that's basically it. Know exactly what it is you're going to be doing, what exactly you're going to be documenting, and you know, we can make those decisions tonight together. Even if it's like one project. Yeah. You know, just get that set up going, because next time you get a good one, yeah. it'll, it'll all be there for you just to add it in. <laughs> exactly. So. so the goal for next time is to have all of our projects uh, as, many as many as you'd like to, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna give somebody a huge assignment. What's up? How many projects is too many for a portfolio? Well, if they're all amazing, you should include all of them. No. <laughs> my my <laughs> reason like, even so like realistically, video. like yeah. a number like five to seven. Well, three think to about five, it. Like, like if you're gonna be emailing this PDF to a, a company. And you want to make it as easy as possible for them so they can read it on the computer, they can print it out from their computer. But if it's 15 pages, mm -hmm. that's a little excessive. No one's gonna, you're not going to keep someone's attention for that long. Just like no one wants to look at it more than a one page resume. Your common Very sense is probably the best. Yeah. Uh, if you yeah. think it's too long, it's probably too long. Okay, well, no, I was that. looking online, and about the average number of pages I saw was around 60. Yeah. So, Six that's, so like, if yeah. you had, if you had a project that you want, know, like a project six pages per project, and 10 projects. That's by the end of your yeah. school too. So yeah, that's well, these were, these are Yeah. Portfolio, like, I, saw, I saw something right. similar to, I mean, you could have a portfolio that is 10 to 15 pages long on just one project. Mm -hmm. You know, like you really truly could if you wanted to, but I feel like just kind of, right now it's for the internship, like how would you cater it towards that? That brings me to my next question. Multiple pages per project, or should we roughly try to stay one project per page, one page per project? I feel like it depends oh. on, um, like, you can design it. cater to the strength of the project. Like, I if think you're yeah. stronger ones, more pages, yeah. Yeah. Plus pages. If you want to make it so, like, you're flipping through pages and it's the story of how you went through one project, mm -hmm. you can totally do that. You know, um, I, I don't think there's like a a right way or a right amount of pages. There's definitely like somebody skimming through projects. They have a stack of a hundred portfolios to go through. They definitely, uh, they definitely prefer that it's shorter, but um, more so if you come out of this with a really kick-ass portfolio, you're, you're gonna know where to start when you start adding new projects to it. You're gonna know what colors you're using if you want to switch it up, you know the process. So, uh, so I think once you have your portfolio built, it'll be really easy. To like, uh, this doesn't line up with this, but it's really easy to mm -hmm. take stuff out yeah. than it is to add more. Yeah. So What's up, Emily? Important. Yeah. I'm just. I, I was just gonna say I have the two Stotlers. I don't know how many of you remember them, but 
Um, Michael Stotler graduated a couple years ago and then his brother graduated like four years before him. And I have both their portfolios that they used when they got their jobs out of school. Um, and his brother, uh, he did his by process. So like, I can show you guys these, but the yeah, example- you to send them, that'd be awesome later. <laughs> yeah, but like one portfolio, he did his by process. So he has all of his sketches, all of his concept plans, and then all of his renderings. And like, that was his style. But then Stotler, uh, Michael did his portfolio by project. So you can even think outside the box a little bit um, in how you set it up. It doesn't have to be one project. Um, you can set it up, say like you want to showcase your sketching and your concept style and you have a ton of stuff for that that you've documented, you can set it up that way. So, you know, that to answer your question, don't think too far ahead. Like Abby was saying, document your work, document your work right now tomorrow or next time we meet, we're going to talk about layout and setup and that kind of stuff. Maybe something will speak to you yeah. when you're looking through your projects. And then for, for those that don't know, the third night, which is the following um, Monday, so that's the, the uh, 1st of February, I believe. Yeah, 1st of February. Um, more, most likely Jeff Knight, uh, a professor from the Visual Arts Department, be coming in and giving a uh, brief lecture on graphic design. So that's all the finishing touches, the font, the colors, um, other other things that we just don't learn about in the landscape architecture department that makes our graphic design stand out. So um, that's that's sort of how this whole thing will be structured. And yeah, um, any any other points to add? I was gonna say. Uh... I know obviously our big projects are good ones to put on, but then would you say even smaller stuff, like if you just have, like if you have sketches that you kind of developed into something, would you include those? You know, could you have a whole section of your portfolio just to like these sketches? Yeah. I know they love seeing If you If you kept developing that little straight edge you have, that's yeah. something I would personally include. Yeah. I think it's an idea that you have that you've turned into something tangible that people can use to make drawing easier in, in that case. Yeah, I think always going back, like, does this fit in my design portfolio? Yes, that would. <laughs> Any last minute questions? Anything anyone wants to talk about? Nothing? Cricket? I want to see if there's a general question for everybody. Sure. Uh, it's a really, really hard question that I've been working with for a while. and. Maybe you've heard it before, but are mayonnaise an instrument? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I've seen a video. I've seen a video where somebody made it happen. So <laughs> it, it was on the internet, so it had to be true. Of course, you yeah. take music out of it. <laughs> it's an instrument. I don't know. I want to see. I want to go to everybody and kind of see what their look like. Your best project. Yeah, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. <laughs> <laughs> Their project that is. <laughs> so yeah, those those online and for recording. And thanks for joining us. See you next week. I'm here. I'm here till Friday. <laughs> thanks, Emily. Thank you, Brian. It's, uh,